you could say that the toughest part in the Nova section is behind us. In this video, we'll have some fun making this rig cool and easy to use. Okay, let's turn off these axes. Right now, they are not useful to us, they're just distracting. So go to the Armature tab, Viewport Display and Disable Axes. And now we'll be organizing the rig, which means creating bone collections, which are also found under the Armature tab. And while we are here, take a look at the pose options. We have pose position and rest position. So pose position is the default mode, which means that you can pose and animate your rig. So let's give it a quick pose. And rest position will bring the rig into its default position which is exactly the same thing that we get in edit mode. This can be useful while performing some rigging operations, but the main reason to mention it here is that in this mode, I'm unable to move, rotate and scale the bones. I'll get this message saying, cannot change pose when rest position is enabled. So if you get something like this, just switch back to pose position and you'll be able to pose your character again. And one more reason, your rig may not be moving as you expect it to move. In the end panel under tool, there is this location option. If I enable it, I can move the bone, but if I try to rotate or scale it, it won't react. Sometimes you may enable this option by mistake and wonder why your bones are not rotating. So turn off locations and your rig will start behaving normally. Back to bone collections. In the previous video, we created the MCH collection. So let's see if we have other bones that belong there. Can you find any? The wrist twist is an MCH bone. It creates an automation and it's not supposed to be animated manually. So let's press F2 and name it mch arm twistl And let's do the same for the right one. And what about the shoulder twist? You could make it MCH, but you may want to tweak this bone manually from time to time. For this character, the twisting should work almost perfectly, but if you don't like it at any point, just select your twist bone and you can rotate it manually. Even though it is constrained, the dump track ignores the Y axis, so we can still rotate this bone manually. So I'm going to keep this bone as a control. So let's select the wrist twist and move it to the MCH collection. Same for the right one. And that is it for the MCH collection. Other than mechanisms, bones can be used for controls or for deforming the character. So let's go to our bone collections and I'm going to rename the default bones collection to controls and press the plus button and name the new collection deform. I'll unhide MCH because some of my MCH bones may also be deforming. For example, the wrist twist is like that. Speaking of which, I think I forgot to make this MCH toe non-deforming. Yep. I have to disable deform for these bones. And now let's see which bones are deforming bones. These are mostly the bones that we created initially for our base armature. So here the original toe bone, the foot bone, the shin bone, the upper leg, the hips, the spine, the chest, the shoulder, the upper arm, the lower arm, as well as the twist bones, the hand and all of the fingers. And also the neck and the head. I only selected the left side because I can go to select, select mirror, and from the options down here, choose extend so that my initial selection is kept. Now I have all deforming bones selected. So now if I press M and move them to the deform collection, that will move the MCH wrist bones away from the MCH collection. So instead, we're going to press shift M, which means that we'll keep the bones on their current collections, but we'll also add them to another collection. And I'm going to choose deform. So my MCH bones are all organized. So I'll hide the collection. And now the control collection has a lot of bones that don't belong there. All bones that are just deforming and not supposed to be animated, I'm going to exclude from this collection. So the shin, the upper leg, and the foot is also not control. 
because I am controlling it with this IK target bone. Let's select the same bones on the right side as well. And then to remove them from the controls collection, there are a couple of ways. I can go to bone collections, highlight controls and click remove. And another one, if I just undo, I can press shift M and click the controls collection. It has a minus sign next to it. So that means that I'll be removing these bones from the collection. Now, if I hide the deform collection, these leg bones disappeared because they're not controls. And currently only my controls collection is visible. And I think this should be it. All of these bones are supposed to be control bones. If I hide controls and unhide deforms, I'll only see my deform bones. And if I hide deform and unhide MCH, I'll only see the MCH bones. This rig is not that complicated, so you can get away without organizing the bones, but the more complex the rig, the more important organization becomes. Next, we are going to be creating the shapes for the controls. So let me hide the MCH bones and unhide the controls. Then go to object mode and let's create our shapes. We'll make much nicer controls than in level one. In level one, we just use circles. That is boring, we can do better. So in object mode, press Shift A, Mesh, and choose Circle. And I'm going to give it 16 vertices just to make it a little bit simpler. A circle is a shape that you will always need. Then again, Shift A and add a cube. Go to edit mode for this cube, select everything, press X and choose only faces. And that gives us a wireframe of a cube because we usually just use wireframes for shapes. Next, in object mode, I'll create a UV sphere, segments to 16 and rings to eight. Go to edit mode and select the central loops. Press Ctrl I, X and delete vertices. And that gives us a wireframe of a sphere. By the way, these shapes are not in the center of the world. Also, they may look pretty big, but that's okay, it doesn't matter because when we apply the shapes to the bones, their pivot point matches the pivot point of the bone and also the size of the shape changes based on the size of the bone. On top of that, we have nice tools to tweak the size and orientation of the shape. So no need to worry about this. I can even move these shapes around. It really won't matter much. So next shape I want, I'll create a plane, go to edit mode, select it all, press R, then Z, then 45, delete faces. Then I'll grab these edges, move them up a little bit, select everything, control shift B and bevel these edges. And that gives me this curvy shape. And once again, I'll create a plane, go to edit mode, delete only faces, select everything, squash it on the X axis and then control shift B and bevel it a little bit. And one last shape that I use specifically for the shoulders. Same thing, plane, delete the faces, squash it a bit. Subdivide the edges. Move these vertices up a bit. Control shift B to bevel them. And then select these vertices. Control shift B to bevel them a bit as well. Okay. Now let's name our shapes. These shapes are often called widgets and we abbreviate that to WGT dash. So this will be WGT cube, WGT sphere, WGT circle, WGT, I guess I'll call this curvy, WGT shoulder, and this shape I'll call WGT rectangle. I'll select all of these shapes, press M to move them to a new collection, call the collection WGTS, and I can hide the widgets. Now go to the rig, go to pose mode, and let's start setting up these shapes. I'll start from the leg, let's set up the ankle pivot, I'll go to the bone tab, viewport display, custom bone shape, and start typing WGT, and I'll make this a rectangle. This looks a bit weird now, but if I move this shape, you can hold shift to make this movement more gradual.
I can place this shape exactly at the base of the foot. And even though the point of rotation of this control is here, placing it like this makes it so intuitive. This is the foot control and it's very obvious. Next, I'm going to give this bone the sphere shape. I want to make it smaller. And by the way, you can click and drag down to select all of these scale options. And then hold shift to make the scaling gradual and scale down your shape. Now I'll select all of the other pivots, shift select this one, right click on the custom shape, copy to select it, and then right click on the scale, copy all to select it. Then select this shape and I'm going to move it up a little bit. The idea is that even when I disable in front, this shape will be visible. And this gives me a very minimalistic look. Next, the toe. I'll make it a circle, rotate it a bit, and it looks good to me. Then I can go to edit mode, select all of these bones, only on the left side, right click, symmetrize, and all of these shapes will be symmetrized. And I also want to give the pole target a sphere shape. Scale it down, edit mode, right click, symmetrize. Then for the spine bones, I'm going to use the curvy shape. Select all other spine bones, shift select the hips, right click, copy to select it. Right click on rotation, copy all to select it. And then play with the size and orientation a little bit more. So the reason I use this curvy shape is because it has a little bit of direction, which makes it more obvious that this hips rotates differently from the spine bone. For the torso bone, I'm going to use WGT cube. I'll use scale and translation to shape it exactly as I want. For the neck, I'll use a circle. Copy the shape to the head. For this shoulder, I'll use the special shoulder widget that I created. I just need to orient it and position it the way I like. And that will give me an intuitive shoulder control. I'll select the entire arm, set the circle shape, right click, copy to select it, rotate and right click, copy all to select it, and then optimize the shape of each widget. For this twist bone, I guess I'll use the curvy shape. And for the fingers, I'll just select all of them. I'll set the sphere widget, right click, copy to select it, tweak the size a little bit, right click, copy all to select it. And I'll call this good. You can certainly create a nicer shape for the fingers. That is up to you. Creating your shapes can be very time consuming, but it can be worth it. Now in edit mode, select the entire left arm, right click, symmetrize, and we'll have the same shapes on the right side. Now let's set bone colors. 
very similar to what we did in level 1. Select all bones on the left side, give them the red color, and apply to all with this button. Select, select mirror without extend, and now we have the right bones selected, give them blue color, and apply to all. Select all spine and head and neck bones, give them the yellow color. For the torso, I'm going to use a special green color. And one control we did not create in the previous video is a root control. It is a good idea to have it. So let's go to edit mode, shift S, cursor to world origin, so that my bone will appear exactly at the center. And then shift A to create a new bone. Press F2 and name it root. From the side view, switch to individual origins. Press R and type 90 on the numpad. Or you could use the rotate gizmo, hold control and rotate until the bone is flat on the ground. And then scale it down a bit. If we enable axis for a second, we can also play with the axis position to set where the axis is displayed. And now that I see my axis, you'll see that it matches the world orientation exactly. This is called a world oriented bone and the root should ideally be world oriented. Again, this has to do with the animation curves that this bone will produce. If we have it world oriented, that means that Z will means moving up and Y will mean moving front and back and X sideways. Very easy to follow and understand. Now I'm trying to determine which bones need to be parented to the root and I believe that should be the torso bone and the two ankle controls. So select them, shift select the root, control P, keep offset and now this root will move everything with it. Let's unhide our widgets and select the widget collection, create a new circle shape with 24 vertices. Select four vertices like this, switch to bounding box center, press S to scale up and that will create these arrow-like shapes. Let's call this WGT root, hide the widgets, go to the rig, select this root bone, give it the root widget, and it is shaped and oriented perfectly. I'll just give it a special purple color. And that's it. Our rig is nice and pretty. One final cool trick that you can do. This is kind of new in Blender 4.2. We have a new wire width setting, which can make your shapes wire thicker and therefore easier to notice. So let's set it to two. Press A to select all other shapes. Right click, copy to select it. Then go to the armature tab, disable axis and in front. And now we have a rig that looks really professional with nice clean shapes that are intuitive and easy to select. Awesome work so far. This rig is ready to rock. The only problem that we still have is that we've been avoiding weight painting until now. And so the next chapter will be all about that. In level one, I gave you some basics for weight painting, which are great. But in the next video, again, we'll just go deeper into the options so that you don't just know where to click, but why you're clicking and what is really happening. This is the difference between a beginner and someone who aspires to go to higher levels in rigging.